Hi, I'm Stephen Howard, an award-winning author and leadership coach, and my specialty is turning good managers into great leaders. Today, I want to share with you some of my ideas on the foundations of great leadership. I also want to highlight how great leaders are different, very different, from good leaders and good managers. But first, let's talk about leadership in general. Leadership is not a sometime thing. It's when I feel like it thing. It's an all-time thing, especially when you're in the workplace. You don't get to be a leader just now and then, or when you feel like it, or when the urge hits you. No, you have to be a leader, particularly when you are in the workplace. You have to be a leader all the time. People are observing you. People are watching. And these people include your direct reports, your team members, your peers and colleagues, and certainly your bosses as well. Also, leadership is about behaviors and actions. Leadership is basically a collection of skills and behaviors that become habitual either consciously or unconsciously. Now, here's one of the big differences between great leaders and good leaders. Great leadership is about deliberate, conscious, purposeful behavior. Leadership is also a privilege. It has nothing to do with position or title or where you fit on the org chart. It has nothing to do with whether or not you get a corner office. It has nothing to do with prestige. Leadership, quite frankly, is a skill. It's a skill that you can develop, that you can enhance, that you can practice and that you can enhance some more. And this is why critical leadership skills in the past few years have segued into a focus on behaviors and actions over things like traits, and titles, and looking the part. It's also why it's important to move from leadership training to leadership education. And there's a big difference between training and education. And leadership is certainly not something that you can fake it till you make it. No, there's no way. If you fake it, you're going to be caught out. If you fake it, you lose authenticity. When you fake it, you lose credibility. And when you lose authenticity and you lose credibility, there goes trust. And without trust, you cannot be a good leader, much less a great leader. Unfortunately, many new supervisors, new managers, new team leaders, when they get promoted from that individual contributor position into, into some sort of leadership or managerial position, their natural tendency is to act like a boss, to give orders, to try and look the part, to kind of look and act like that old school type leader, the old control and command type leader. You know, that style, the my way or the highway approach, that just doesn't make it anymore. Not, the, not in the business world. Those days are long gone, my friends. Nobody in the workplace wants to be managed. No one wants to be bossed. They want to be led. They want to be inspired. They want to be motivated. They want to be recognized for their efforts and rewarded for their results. Let me share with you a few quotations on why all leaders really need to focus on developing their core leadership skills and their core leadership behaviors. The first quotation I'd like to share with you comes from Professor Ginzel from the Booth School of Management at the University of Chicago. And she says, recognize that what matters it's not whether you fit into some leadership suit of clothes or match up to some template of a leadership personality. No, what matters is how you choose to behave. I think that's very important, particularly combine that with the next quotation from Roger Trapp, writing in Forbes magazine. And he said, the distinction is crucial because unlike traits, behaviors form the basis for skills and skills can be practiced. And that's one of the reasons I really deeply believe that it's so important that we talk about leadership education and not just leadership training. And leadership training is all about skills, feedback skills, communication skills, prioritization skills, productivity skills. To become a really great leader, you will have to focus on your behaviors. And your behaviors of leadership are formed by your leadership mindset and your leadership philosophy. But the important thing is that these behaviors, they form the basis for the skills and those skills can be practiced. And that's why I say anyone can become a great leader because you can learn the skills, you can practice the skills. Management guru Peter Drucker adds, only three things happen naturally in organizations, friction, confusion, and underperformance. Everything else requires leadership. Let me tell you something, I've worked in organizations where there was a lot of friction a lot of confusion and a great deal of underperformance. And I can guarantee you that in those organizations, 
there was a lack of leadership or there was poor quality leadership. And that's why those organizations started to fall apart. Now, my own viewpoint is that first time supervisors, managers, and team leaders, well, they're the glue between strategy and execution. And like glue, they have to bond to both sides. So first line supervisors, managers, and leaders of teams need to glue one side to the strategy and to the other side to the execution. And I love this quote from General Schwarzkopf. He said, leadership is a combination of strategy and character. If you must be without one, be without the strategy. Again, see the importance that he places on character, on behaviors, character traits, such as integrity, trust, honesty, openness, transparency. And John Quincy Adams, the second president of the United States, said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, do more, and become more, then you're a leader. So what does all this have to do with great leadership? Well, I want to talk to you about the foundations of great leadership. And I believe great leadership is an art. It is the art of achieving progress through the involvement and the actions of others. And notice those words. It's about achieving progress. Not about achieving goals. Not about achieving desired outcomes. It's about making progress. And I think that's important because if you lead a team and you achieve 94% of your goals this year, then you've got a team that's in place the next year. Maybe next year they'll achieve the 100% of the goals. But if you look at that 94% as a shortfalling, as a problem, as something to fix, you may not have the team capable with enough cohesion to execute the next year. So achieve progress and achieve that through their involvement. You know, the old days of control and command leadership are gone. You can't get away in the business world, particularly, of telling people what to do and how to do it. You've got to get them involved, at least involved in the how, how to execute. And then the actions that they take will give you a better chance of achieving the desired goals and outcomes that you have. There are four core aspects of being a great leader. There's leading people. There's leading people development. Naturally, there's leading for results. And the one that's often overlooked, leading your own personal development and growth. And these are built on a foundation of trust. And that trust, you earn trust, you maintain trust, you build trust through five critical behaviors. Transparency, being authentic, having credibility, being accountable, holding others accountable, holding your team members accountable, holding your peers accountable, and flexibility. Particularly in today's COVID or post-COVID worlds, you have to be flexible. We, things are just changing. People need to be flexible. As leaders, we have to be flexible and understand that everyone's going through very stressful times full of anxiety. Now, what makes a great leader? Two key elements form that foundation. Having a personal leadership philosophy and having a leadership mindset. Let's talk about the personal leadership philosophy for just a moment. Kanosuke Machishida who founded Panasonic in Japan, but who also spent a lot of time reading and writing about management. In fact, in Japan, he was known as the guru of management. And he said, if you are a leader, you must have an ideology of leadership. If you lack an ideology and you attempt to decide everything on a case-by-case -case basis, you will never be capable of strong leadership. And that is so true. You know, what Machishita san is telling us here is that one of the critical things that leaders need to do is to be consistent. Be consistent in your leadership behaviors. Be consistent in your leadership decisions. Be consistent in the questions that you ask. But if you're doing everything on a case-by-case -case basis, you're not going to achieve consistency. And that means you're not going to be a strong leader. You can be a good leader. You can be a good manager. But you're not going to be a great leader. You're not going to be a strong leader. If you want to know more about the importance of having a personal leadership philosophy, please go to my website, calianteleadership.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a tab called resources. And under that tab is another section called articles. Now I have an article called the importance of having a personal leadership philosophy. And included with that article are seven questions, seven sets of questions to ask yourself in developing, refining, or fine tuning your leadership philosophy. So it's a free article. Go to calianteleadership.com. 
Look under the resources section and then in resources, look under articles. In addition, on my YouTube channel on leadership, I have a video called Seven Questions for Developing Your Personal Leadership Philosophy. And it's based on those seven questions that are in the article. It's under the playlist called How to Become a Great Leader. So go to Stephen Howard on Leadership on YouTube and have a look at that, that video. The second element to making a great leader is the leadership mindset. What do we mean by mindset? I believe this quotation from Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper pretty much sums up a great leadership mindset. She said, you manage things and you lead people. Think about that. What a great mindset to have. You manage things, you manage projects, you manage tasks, you manage policy, you manage procedures, but you lead people. And if you think about it, do you want to be managed? Does anybody in your organization really want to be managed or do they want to be led? A great leader understands that. And a great leader is not afraid to put on that leadership hat, take off the management hat and lead their people lead their people towards progress. Now, everyone's leadership mindset is going to be different, but I would encourage you to have these four elements as part of your mindset. Understand how are you going to develop people? What focus are you going to put on developing your people? And likewise, how are you going to develop yourself? And what focus are you going to put on developing yourself? How will you communicate as a leader? What will be your communication style? What channels of communications will you focus on? What's your preferred method of communicating? And remember, communication is not just sending out messages. A critical aspect of communication is listening, questioning, asking good questions, listening not only to what is being said, but also listening for what you're not being told. And lastly, particularly in today's environment where we're all under stress and under anxiety and the business world operates 24-7, you know, 364 or 365 days a year, depending on whether or not you get one day off for Christmas or some national holiday. How do you make more mindful decisions? How do you learn as a leader to pause, to reflect, to respond to situations, events, and people rather than reacting to situations, events, and people? You should think about your own great leadership mindset. I highly recommend that you have these four elements in mind and think about how you're going to incorporate them. Much like Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper, she obviously gave that a great deal of thought. And you could see her mindset was very straightforward, managing things, leading people. To be a great leader, you have to have a great set of tools and a great set of skills. And remember, those skills are going to be based off your leadership behavior. They're going to be formed around your leadership philosophy and your leadership mindset. Some of these tools are motivational skills. How can you motivate others as well as how can you motivate yourself? How will you communicate a clear line of value so that everyone on your team understands the value of their contributions, how they're contributing to the team, how the team is contributing to some strategy, whether that's a division strategy or a department strategy or maybe even a corporate wide strategy. How will you prioritize? What factors will you consider when making decisions about what to prioritize, including how much prioritization will you give the way you develop people? How do you lead people through change? The business world is just non-constant change. Very few people are taught how to lead others through change. As I said before, the old way, the my way or the highway approach, the command and control approach, just won't work anymore. So what are the approaches? What are the ways to lead people through change? How will you establish goals? How will you set goals and how will you communicate those goals? How do you feel about delegating? What process will you use for delegating? And it has to be more than simply the first person you see is who you delegate the work to. And coaching. Great leaders are great coaches. How will you develop your coaching skills? How will you learn to be a great coach on your way to becoming a great leader. I'll get some more tips for you on my YouTube channel. Again, the YouTube channel is called Stephen Howard on Leadership. And there's a video there called Big Five Leadership Mindset Traits. Again, it's under the How to Become a Great Leader playlist. So I highly recommend when you have time, go to YouTube, do a search on Stephen Howard on Great Leadership, and have a watch of the video, Big Five Leadership Mindset Traits. 
Would you like to learn more about great leadership, about the foundations of great leadership, and how you can start a journey towards great leadership? Well, I've got some good news for you. I've just launched a new product called The Art of Great Leadership. Skills and tips for developing from a good manager to a great leader. Now, this educational program is online and it includes eight video modules. And here's the eight, the multiple hats of leadership. How do you juggle your responsibilities as a manager, as a leader, and your ongoing responsibilities as an individual contributor? How you communicate as a leader? As I mentioned earlier, how will you build your listening skills? What questioning skills work best? How will you lead for results? Leading people, leading people development, mindful decision-making, and also a module on leadership in today's difficult situations. I often have been asked when I was doing classroom training, questions like, how do you lead in the Me Too generation? How do you lead the ones that you consider retired on the job? How do you lead your former peers? So many challenging situations out there. And this whole module gives you some tips and techniques for leading in these very difficult and challenging situations. And then lastly, how will you lead your own personal development? Some tips and hints on that as well. So these are the eight core modules in the program called The Art of Great Leadership, Skills and Tips for Developing from a Good Manager to a Great Leader. Now, as I mentioned, each module is roughly 60 to 75 minutes. The program also comes with a personal workbook and a learning journal in PDF. And all participants will receive two years of monthly group coaching sessions. And I'll record these sessions in case you can't attend one, if you're busy or have a scheduling conflict, but also in case you ever want to go back and relook at something or rehear the discussion. And I'm going to keep these group coaching sessions small, probably no more than 30 people. And the reason for that is I want them to be interactive. I want them to be meaningful for you. I want them to have great value for you so that when you participate in these, you have a chance to say, hey, I have this situation, or I know someone who has this situation, or how do you deal with this? Because as we said before, the business world is constantly changing. And these monthly group coaching sessions will be a great way for you to reinforce what you learn in the Art of the Great Leadership educational program. You'll also receive 25% discount on any one-to-one -one leadership coaching sessions that you'd like to have. There's two bonus videos, which I'll explain on the next slide. And I'll send you an autographed copy of my book, Eight Keys Becoming a Great Leader, Leadership Lessons and Tips from Gibbs, Yoda, and Captain Jack Sparrow. So the two bonus videos, How Stress and Anxiety Impacts Your Decision-Making, which is based on one of my latest books, and also Building and Maintaining Your Long-Term Brain Health. And in this video, I'll share with you some of the research that I came across in writing my book, Better Decisions, better thinking, better outcomes. And it's a book I'm very proud of. It received a silver award from the Nonfiction Authors Association. And it also picked up an award from the Independent Press Award, which is an association for independently published books. Better decisions, better thinking, better outcomes. As I mentioned, you'll receive a free copy of Eight Keys to Becoming a Great Leader. And I admit that's a pretty boring title, no doubt about it. But what's not boring is the subtitle with leadership lessons and tips from Gibbs, Yoda, and Captain Jack Sparrow. So in the book, I take scenes from the TV show NCIS, which features special agent Leroy Jethro Gibbs, the former ex-Marine sniper, whose style is very much control and command, but he builds great loyalty in his team. And a lot of things you can learn about building loyalty amongst team members by watching his program. And then there's our philosophical leader, Yoda, from the Star Wars franchise. And he really makes you think about your principles, about your philosophy, about your mindset of leadership. And of course, there's lovable Captain Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. And while I wouldn't recommend leading people into the same kind of activities that our friendly pirate does, you can learn a lot about motivation by watching Captain Jack Sparrow because he really knows how to motivate his band of pirates. So it's a fun book to read. It's only about 140 pages, and I look forward to sending you an autographed copy of the book after you joined our program. So in summary, the program comprises lifetime access to the eight leadership training modules, a personal workbook and learning journal, 
monthly coaching sessions for two years. So even, you know, look, the modules are an hour long. So you could do two modules a week. You could finish all eight modules in a month. You'll still get two years of the monthly coaching sessions. I'll also give you a 25% discount on any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions that you engage in with me. And of course, our two bonus videos, lifetime access to both of those, how stress and anxiety impacts your decision-making and building and maintaining your long-term brain health. And of course, the autographed copy of Eight Keys to Becoming a Great Leader with leadership lessons and tips from Gibbs, Yoda, and Captain Jack Sparrow. Now this program will deliver the skills and tips for developing you from a good manager to a great leader. And it's a $5,000 value. So I have a special offer for you today, partially in appreciation for you watching this video on the foundations of great leadership, but really, really because of your interest in starting a journey to great leadership. And that offer is $1,975. And that's for the entire package. That's for the eight online video modules, the personal workbook, the monthly group coaching sessions for two years, the two bonus videos, the autographed copy of Eight Keys Becoming a Great Leader. And of course, you still get the discount on any one-to-one -one coaching sessions that you might want to have with me individually. If you want to learn more about this program, go to www.theartofgreatleadership.com. And on that website, you'll find a couple of explanatory videos on the program, detailed information on each module. You'll find a little bit more about my background and my philosophy of leadership. So go to www.theartofgreatleadership.com. Or even better, let's talk. Book a phone call with me to discuss what are your specific needs? What are the challenges you're facing in developing yourself as a leader? What are the opportunities before you? And most importantly, what are your desires? What do you want to get out of a leadership educational program? So book a free call with me. Go to calendy.com backstroke Stephen Howard. Book a 15 or 20 minute phone call. I'll be happy to talk with you. I really want to hear from you in your own words. What are the three or four major challenges or specific needs or desires that you have in developing yourself as a great leader and moving yourself from a good manager to a great leader? As I said earlier, great leadership is an art. It's the art of achieving progress through the involvement and actions of others. So take action now. Enhance your leadership skills. Learn some new techniques, some best practice skills, some new methods. Start your journey in going from a good manager to a great leader. You can become a great leader. And I look forward to being your guide, your coach, your mentor on this journey. Thank you very much.